Brawlers, baby. No, we should be all right. Here we go. All right, what's going on, boxing fans? This is your boy Rick Muhammad, Brawler Sports Media in the building. This is the Brawler Sports Boxing Show. My associates at Three Kings Boxing.com, Studio Nine. Hey, this guy is no, he's no stranger to us at all. Uh, we had my man on a couple of months ago, and as you all know, this is my man, uh, Raiz the Beast Alim, who just gave us one hell of a performance this past Saturday night. Uh, for the WBF interim 122-pound uh, championship versus Vic Pasillas. How you doing, champ? What's up, baby? Hey, what's up? I'm doing good. Oh, uh, man. First and foremost, congratulations on a, on a great victory the other night. Uh, that was a, a, a strategic fight plan you had, and that's how you show up and show out, man. What <laughs> would you give yourself as a grade? I want to hear this. Oh, uh, man, you know, honestly, uh, I haven't watched the fight yet. Uh, I'm probably going to sit on it for like a good month before I watch it. That's what I do with uh, most of my fights. Uh -huh. uh, but just kind of reflecting back, you know, I, I did a lot of good things, but uh, I did do some things that uh, I'm not happy about, you know, so I got to tighten up uh, for, the, yeah. for the next fight. And it's just about getting better and better. But I do give myself an A, you know, Absolutely. without watching the fight, just reflecting back, getting the win getting the stoppage, yeah, I'm giving myself an A. Absolutely. I, I gave given you an A-plus, actually, because, uh, man, I mean, and then, and then all the trash talking that Vic Pasillas was talking about, he ain't on my level, I'm about to show this kid, blah, blah, this, and then blah, blah, that. And I heard you shout out after the fight, well, you ain't on my level. <laughs> <laughs> so, man. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, People can trash talk all they want. Uh, that really goes in one ear and out the other for me. I, I don't care because at the end of the day, you know, your trainers can't save you. The ref can't save you. When you when that bell rings, you're stuck in there with me for 12 rounds. That's the beauty of boxing. It's an individual sport. You know what I'm saying? This ain't football, basketball, baseball. It's just me and you, uh, you know, like Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> so, uh you had a lot of success in that fight, man. You was, you was putting together some some vicious punches. You was very tactical and a, and a technician Saturday night. Your jab was a, a good power, snappy jab, not pawing. You snapped that jab with conviction, and and the jab is supposed to hurt hurt your opponent just as if it was a, a, a left hook, right hand uppercut. That's why it's the setup punch because you you miscombobulate them when you hit them with it properly. And your body shots, your footwork. See, a lot of fans don't know that you're by by nature born as a southpaw yourself. Mm -hmm. You just choose to fight in the orthodox conventional stance. Because I saw you switch up a lot of times Saturday night, and you just went out of your left your orthodox and was in a southpaw stance, and then went right back to orthodox. And you had a lot of success doing that. He probably was so confused. How how comfortable is it for you knowing that you choose to fight orthodox? And you're really a natural softball. Uh, no confusion for you at all? No, I mean, I feel comfortable. Uh, I do it in sparring all the time. You know, uh, if the angle's there or if I choose to create the angle or if I just simply want to do it. You know, so it's uh, it, it starts with doing it at the gym, uh, doing it on the mitts or doing it in the sparring. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable doing it in a fight. Uh, you know, like you said, it can throw the other guy off. He, he might not be expecting that. And that just works in your favor. And now your background, you, you have a karate background as well, correct? You're a third degree black belt, they were saying? Uh, I, I never knew that, a martial arts side of you. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a first degree black belt. Uh, my dad was a sixth degree black belt, you know, so, yeah. Really? Oh, man. So that, that explains the agility and the mobility that you bring to the ring. That's why you can move as graceful as you do. That's why your hand... And your, and your speed and your power is the way it is because you understand the breathing and, you know, like like chi, tai chi. <laughs> you know, I took the art for a little bit. But I, I did kung fu for about a year in Chicago. So I, I understand that that's, that's definitely an advantage, uh, especially when you can convert it and now put it into the form of boxing. 
Yeah, you know, that and, uh, you know, it, it also teaches you how to be humble. You know, it's like in the sport of boxing, it only takes one punch. You know, it only takes one punch, you know. And uh, as far as my, my opponent, the guy I fought, Vic Casillas, you know, he's a hell of a fighter, great competitor. You know, yeah. if he fights somebody else in the division, he probably wins. But, uh, you know, I feel like he, he did come in cocky, you know, uh, mm -hmm. saying he's going to do this and do that. Well, that's cool. Bring it. And uh, mm -hmm. he brought his A game. And I brought mine. The best man won. And, you know, and, and that's the business in this business of boxing. The trash talking sells tickets. It hypes the fans up that much more. Uh, if there's a spread or a line going on in Vegas, hell, it even, it even hypes that. You know, but he was a tough customer. You take your hat off to anybody that steps into the ring and takes on this sport because this is not easy to do. You know, oh. hands down. He was, he was tough. He was gallant. Uh, he fought like a champion, if you will. You knocked him down four times, and the dude just kept getting back up. At what point did you say, well, damn, I hit him with everything but the kitchen sink. When is the dude going to go away? <laughs> uh, you know, and that's something that, uh, like, re re reflecting back on the fight, that's something that I'm not necessarily happy with, that, uh, you know, I, I dropped him, and then it might have been, like, uh, the sixth or seventh round. I was kind of going for the knockout. You know, I knew I could hurt him and I knew I was going to stop him. I was just trying too hard. And, you know, I have too much experience to be in that situation, you know, mm -hmm. because it was at a time to where he had to show the, the ref that he was alive. He was in it to win it. He had to show his corner that he was alive and he was in it to yeah. win it. So he yeah. needed any type of a spark he could get, you know. And so he was trying to up the pace. And then I was trying to up the pace. And then kind of keep up, and then you know something click, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Just relax. For relax. Me. Yeah, you know. So if you let him cooperate into a knockout. Yeah, you know, you know so what I mean. Uh, the experience or the boxing IQ kind of came into play, and yeah. then kind of you know, then everything else just fell into place. But then there was a lot of stake for this fight. The trash talking he had done, uh, the 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 WBA the WBA interim belt. It was a lot on the line. So you had a lot of adrenaline going. You was anxious. And you was on another big big platform to show the world on Showtime, you know, what it is that Reese the Beast can do. Reese the Beast can do. And 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 to quote you, you knocked him out. You knocked him down in the second round, the sixth round, the ninth round, and then the 11th and final round, he just couldn't withstand it no more. You caught him with a beautiful right hand, bop, bop, left hook, put a two-piece on him like he was in Popeye's. <laughs> and it was it was beautifully delivered. That was a that was a very uh, masterful fight plan. Uh, your your trainers should have been like ecstatic with you at the end. When they go back and look at this fight, they'll see they have to see that you did everything that you guys trained and set out to do in that fight, man. Yeah, you know, uh, we we work on a lot of things. You know, uh, leverage, turning your punches over, punching with your knuckles. You know, and the and the best part of the knockdowns and the stoppage is. At that point in time, I wasn't trying to knock him out with that punch. You know, uh, I wasn't, I, I didn't put everything on it on that one punch, you know, but it came. So the, uh, that, that was the best thing about it. Did you, did it surprise you at all how, how gracefully you caught him in the first, in the second round when you dropped him? Uh, well, I, I was surprised he dropped. Um, you know, I, I, I practiced that punch, especially with southpaws. You know, he was coming in. But that punch is kind of more of a timing thing. You know, you got to time it just right. And, I, you know, I timed it perfect and caught him beautifully. And I just wish he didn't get back up. But, you know, he's a, he's a hell yeah. of a warrior. Tough guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he was game. Uh, prepared the fight, but I got the job done. Any Anybody other than a Raiz the Bisaline? He going he gonna to cause problems for them. Yeah, you know, well, I, I watched his last fight. That was the only fight of his that I watched was his okay. last fight. And, you know, against another undefeated fighter. And he he looked great. Uh, the difference is I'm a whole nother type of animal than the guy that he fought. He pretty much fought a tree, you know, okay. somebody who was just there to be his. Taylor made for his style. And that's why exactly. styles make fights, you understand? Styles make fights. Yep. Styles make fights. So now... What was your take on the Stephen Fulton Jr. fight and uh, the uh, Angelo Leo? That was a very interesting fight. I was surprised the way uh, Fulton decided to fight that fight, toe-to-toe -to -toe, slugging and banging, because he's more of a moving boxing-style fighter himself. Exactly. Like you, he likes to move. And I guess he felt like he had something to prove uh, to Leo. 
Uh, you know, th th that was a great fight. Uh, a lot of punches thrown in that fight. Uh, Ooh, Fulton wow. surprised me. I, I assumed he, you know, he'd come out boxing and, you know, the championship rounds, he'd be off his legs. You know, Leo would be able to, you know, kind of overwhelm him a little bit. But he fought Leo's fight and beat him at his own game, which is, you know, it, it was a great fight. He he did extremely good. Uh, that but was a tough fight. Of, stamina and endurance to be able to throw Ooh. that many punches and in the 12th round like he wasn't tired like at all you know so yeah. i look at fights like that and it's like okay you know it's like that that's why i train as hard as i do you know do the two a days and do the three a days and do this and that you know mm -hmm. so uh it, i can stand cardio out. cardio is everything yeah cardio in your legs is everything you gotta have those if you ain't got no cardio man it's like it's like a a, a car running out of gas you just you're dead ass tired. Right. It's just uh, you know, neither of them got staggered, neither of them dropped. I can't picture anybody in the division me going forehead to forehead with and it's just standing right there for me to hit. And they're just you know, they're there. <laughs> you know, they're not right. dropping they're No knockdowns or nothing. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, yeah. That was Man. a lot of punches thrown in that fight. Oh my God. I think they said Stephen Fulton delivered. He 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 went over what he normally delivers and had like a hundred punches thrown in in a round. Yeah, well, that's kind of what I train. But you know, I I, I train to be able to throw a hundred punches around. Okay. I don't know how you know. I don't know the statistics and what I threw in my fight. How many I threw and this and that. I, I don't know. Yeah, CompuBox. I'm sure they have your stats uh, yeah. where you can actually gauge that and see if you if you're hitting that hundred hundred punches around mark. Uh, if you will, so you got you got Stephen Fulton Jr. Now is the WBO champ, and then you got uh, uh, Akhmadaliev. Akhmadaliev. He got the IBF and the WBA, and then uh, Luis Neri, mm -hmm. and then uh, you have the uh, the WBA interim. Who would you like next? Do you would you fight Fulton next, or does it matter? Any of those I just named, as long as it's a world title fight. As long as it's a world title fight, you know, I'd fight uh, Stephen Fulton. I'd fight Lewis Neary. I really want to fight Akhmadalia. He, ha he has a super belt. He got he two belts. Belt. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, he has two of the belts. He hasn't defended his title. What's uh, up? I, you know, I want that fight. You know, I I can beat Lewis Neary and I can beat Stephen, Stephen Fulton. I beat Akhmadalia. I'm that much closer to un unifying everything. So I saw um, after the fight... Uh, Marshall Kaufman, who is your promoter, uh, King's Promotion, he was walking you back through the tunnel to the dressing room. What, what what conversation was he having with you then about? Was it about your next fight? And hey, we we definitely gonna get that big that big that big one that you're looking for. What 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 what, 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 did, what did he discuss with you that little brief time? Uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, we, we talked about the next one. Uh, I'm, I'm his uh first champion from a promoter uh standpoint. You know, uh. Shout out to Marshall. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. He, he believes in me. You know, he gave me this opportunity. He yeah. took a chance on me, if you will. Yeah, uh, he's, he's a good dude. I know, I know Marshall. Uh, yeah. Personally. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, real, real good people. But yeah, you know, uh, we're we're looking forward to the next one. We're ready for the big one, and it's all about uh, timing. It's all about when. So we're thinking probably four or five months, maybe by the summertime, be back in action. Back in action, and 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 most likely. Uh, for, for another big title shot. Yeah. You're 18 and 0, 12 knockouts. I mean, uh, you're, you're right where you need to be now. I mean, it's just a matter of time. And of course, uh, putting that deal together. As, as anybody, most fans don't know, it's all about business and uh, the deal has to come together. It, it has to make boxing sense. It has to make money sense to the fighter and it has to make money sense to the, to the promoters involved and the networks and uh, a lot of those uh, variables come into play when these fights are being made. And that's the side that fans don't understand. That's why you see the, the hate and the trash talking on social media. Oh, he's scared. He'll punk. He this. They don't they just don't understand. Fighters can go back and forth and call one another out like Spence and Bud. Yeah, we can fight. Let's do this. Don't mean Jack. Right. If Aram ain't on board and Al Hammond ain't, ain't, ain't on board, then there ain't going to be no fight. But 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 also the fighters, you know, one fighter won uh won sixty percent, saying the other one's got to take forty percent, and you know it's like yeah. you got two real big names and yeah, it's it's the money, uh, it's it's the greed because now fighters 
the fighters, the elite fighters, like like those guys, they know the market value and how many dollars are in the pot. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, you know, which which is really disrespectful to say. I think Spence told Bud to take a 70 30 cut. Come on now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like you saying the guy hasn't done anything in boxing. He is under uh, undisputed uh, uh, 35, 40 pounder and WBO 147. That's not fair. I can say for Bud, take a 60 40 split. If you know you can beat him, take the 60 40. You both gonna eat good on the back end of pay per view. It's gonna be a hell of a pay per view well, event. I mean, uh, you know what do you think the odds? What's wrong with 50 50? 50 50 is great. I just don't think Spence was gonna do 50 50 because right. my thing was that I was going with this was take the 60 40 bud, beat him, flip the script. Now guess what, buddy? In the rematch, who gonna get the 60 40? Uh, we gonna we gonna change the tone now because I'm gonna write my own paycheck in that rematch. But 50 50, if they both think they the best and the best is fighting the best, make it fair. Nobody's gonna eat more than the other, and you guys are gonna go home with fat pockets on both ends. Your right. purse slash the back end of your pay-per-view. You know, whatever, whatever the, the agreement, the terms are, the fight terms, you know what I mean? Whatever they can agree to on that, then uh, you know, you they're gonna make good. But we should see. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that fight. Is gonna happen. I feel like I feel like Spence may be trying to age Bud out. He's 33. Let's fight him in two years when he's 35. Damn near 36. It happens. I mean, look at look at look at what we got with Pac-Man and Floyd five years later. All that back and forth trash talking, fans getting hyped. Oh, it's getting ready to go down five years later. And then when the five years hit, it, to me it wasn't all that big of a great fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like when the fight actually happened, it was you know, yeah. In the fight, I feel like went by fast, and it just it didn't live up to the hype. To the hype, I you took the words out of my mouth, champ. Didn't live up to the hype. Yeah. And that was it. So look here. Let's let's show these folks since you don't. Hold up. Let's show them a little bit. A little bit. I want I want them to see. Hey, man! And that, and that, that's pretty much that's pretty much how you do it. Yeah, it's just like, oh just let me and here it comes. I'm doing everything right. You know the sacrifices I'm making, uh, the choices that I'm making inside the gym, outside the gym, the extra stuff that I'm doing. It's all paying off, you know, and that's a, a testament to my uh, performance. I just had to show that. That was just I was like this. This would this would this would be something good for you to. <laughs> Yeah, you know. <laughs> hey, appreciate it. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, I just wanted to 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 do a recap with you and uh share with the fans that uh that's how we get down here, Brawler Sports Media. You know, you you are up and coming prospect, the WBA uh interim champion at 122 pounds. Now we've done a follow up with you. Another big fight you've gotten through very impressively. Uh, you definitely have been arrived in this division, man, and you belong there and I, I believe that you would be a great people's champion so just uh keep striving and keep doing what you're doing and don't let nobody knock you off your horse and don't uh don't don't buy into the hype and all the negativity because that's that's in any sport but you're gonna have the haters and you're oh, gonna yeah. have the lovers oh yeah for sure you know something about me is like you know it's like i develop calluses in my body i i don't really i don't care what anybody says i believe in me and i'm gonna ride that until uh i can't no more What's that shirt you wearing, man? Show the fans. What you, hey, what you hey, mean? hey, hey, brother sports. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Bravo, baby. My man. Hey, champ, I ain't going to keep you no longer, man. I, I appreciate you giving me your time to come on here and talk about that uh, performance. Uh, once again, share with the fans how they can uh, gauge and, and follow you on your social media platforms real quick. Hey, you can find me on uh, Instagram at Raeseline Boxing. Uh, I've been a little bit low key because you know the fight and COVID, everything going on. But I'm gonna be on there. And I'm gonna you know be posting some workouts and whatnot and things like that. So yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Raisa Lean Boxing. That's what's up, you guys. Hey, it's your boy Rick Muhammad, Brawler Sports Media in the building. This was the Brawler Sports Boxing Show. My associates at ThreeKingsBoxing.com, Studio Nine. Let's continue to practice uh, social distancing, wearing our masks when we out in public, and uh, keeping our hands clean because we just don't know. 
how much longer we're gonna be in this pandemic and they're saying there's a new strain out right now guys so let's all be safe champ i want to thank you once again for coming on much respect to you great performance can't wait to see what's next for team Aline. yes sir yes sir hey thank you thanks for having me my man rick mohammed brawler sports media in the building we out baby till next time let's go champ <laughs>